When Germany launched its invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941, the largest invasion in history, many Soviet women volunteered to defend their homeland. They were initially turned away, but as Soviet casualties piled up, Stalin decided to accept women into the Red Army simply because he needed all the soldiers he could get. Some 800,000 women served in the Red Army throughout the war. 200,000 of those women became decorated soldiers and 89 were awarded the highest honor the USSR granted, the hero of the Soviet Union. Some of the women to receive this award were snipers and some of the most successful in the entire war. One was even deemed the fifth deadliest sniper in history. In this video, we're going to shed some light on the incredibly badass female snipers of the Soviet Union. The Red Army deployed over 2,000 female snipers during a four-year period. Only 500 or so survived the war, but some live on forever in the history books. To put it in perspective, the Red Army's female snipers racked up a combined kill count of approximately 11,000. The Central Women's School of Sniper Training was founded in March 1942 and recruited women between the ages of 18 and 26 who were physically fit and had at least seven years of education. The majority of female Soviet snipers were trained at this school. The Soviets believed women would make good snipers because they could withstand cold and stress better than their male counterparts. They also believed that women were more patient, which meant they would wait to land that perfect shot. After graduating from the school, these snipers were assigned to different units and sent to some of the most dangerous battlegrounds in the Soviet Union. Many of them displayed excellence, but here are four of the most celebrated snipers. Natalia Kovshova and Maria Polivanova were best friends and talented snipers. Born in 1920 and 1922 respectively, the pair met as students at a research institute in Moscow. After the Germans invaded the Soviet Union in 1941, Kovshova, the older and more battle-ready of the two, joined the People's Militia, an unofficial military group. Once women were allowed to enlist in the Red Army, she began training as a sniper with the 528th Rifle Regiment, with Bolivanova joining her shortly after. In January 1942, the pair completed training and were assigned to the same unit, the 528th Rifle Regiment, where they both earned the respect of their commanders for their skills. They were the resident sniper duo of the regiment, with Kovsheva serving as the shooter and Polivanova, the spotter. Kovsheva's skill as a sharpshooter earned her the job of teaching new soldiers how to use rifles. The best of her students she took aside, teaching them how to be snipers. Kovsheva and Polivanova were sent on a number of missions on the Northwestern Front, but their last and most famous one came in August 1942, when they were sent to Sotoki Biavoko in the Novgorod Oblast to drive Germans out of a village. Unfortunately for the Soviets, luck was on the German side on this day of the battle, and the Soviet casualties quickly piled up. When the commander of the unit was killed, Kovsheva took over and gave the order to open fire. When the Germans realized they were being attacked by snipers, they answered with a shower of mortar fire. The situation was truly hopeless for the Soviets, so much so that one soldier asked Kovsheva if they could retreat, to which she replied, not one step back, Stalin's slogan at the time. In the end, only Kovsheva and Polivanova were still breathing. Injured, out of ammo and surrounded by Germans, they made their last stand. They each pulled a pin from a grenade, reportedly kissed and blew themselves up along with some surrounding Germans. They were posthumously awarded the hero of the Soviet Union the following year. In June 1942, 18-year-old kindergarten teacher Rosa Shanina joined the Red Army as a sniper after her brother was slain in Leningrad. She enrolled in the Central Women's Sniper Training School, from which she graduated with honors in 1944. She was praised for her ability to shoot doublets, which is when you hit two targets with two rounds in very quick succession. Her instructors asked if she would stay on and teach, but she refused, instead answering the call of duty. 
That call eventually landed her in the 184th Rifle Division, which had a separate female sniper platoon. Due to her talent as a sharpshooter, Shanina was appointed as one of the platoon's commanders as soon as she arrived. On the 5th of April 1944, just three days after she joined the platoon, Shanina iced her first German soldier. According to an anonymous author, after she fired the fatal shot, she slid down into her trench in disbelief and said, I've killed a man. Clearly, it didn't take Shanina very long to come to terms with her actions because between the 6th and 11th of that same month, she dropped a further 13 enemy soldiers while subjected to heavy artillery fire during the battle for the village of Kozigori. Her bravery in this battle earned her first military decoration, the Order of Glory 3rd Class. In June of the same year, as the Soviet Union was launching its offensive Operation Bagration, the decision was made to pull all female snipers from the front lines. This was because it was Soviet policy to spare snipers. They didn't want to lose all of their sharpshooters in one operation. Shanina was not happy about being removed from the action and requested to be sent to the front lines anyway, going so far as to write to Stalin directly, twice. Despite her efforts, she was refused. Pissed off, she decided to go anyway. This earned her a sanction, but she was never court-martialed, so she carried on fighting. During Operation Bagration, she was part of a group tasked with eliminating encircled German soldiers. During one sub-operation, her efforts contributed to the recapture of Vitebsk. Come July, Shanina was again joined by her sisters-in-arms en route to Vilnius to drive out the Germans. In that battle alone, she racked up 12 confirmed kills. By the end of August, just five months after she'd come out of training, Shanina's confirmed kill count reached 42. That month, she was serving under the first Soviet division to enter East Prussia. In a single day of war, she managed to kill five enemy soldiers on their own soil from the safety of a sniper's nest. Much to the amazement of some Canadian journalists who branded her the unseen terror of East Prussia. In October, Shanina became one of the first female snipers to receive the Medal of Courage. But unfortunately, Shanina didn't live long into the following year. In January 1945, while stationed in East Prussia, Shanina knew the end was approaching. With 72 of 78 soldiers in her battalion killed, she wrote in her diary about how she may also soon be dead. In her last ever diary entry, she read about how she and her remaining comrades were hiding out in tanks after the German fire became too intense. The day after this entry, a shell fragment tore open her chest. She was taken to a Soviet hospital, but there was nothing they could do. One nurse recalled Shanina saying that her only regret was that she had done so little. She passed away soon after. In total, after less than a year of fighting, her confirmed kill count was 59. Her diary was published in 1965, solidifying her place in Soviet history and reviving the Soviet people's appreciation for her incredible bravery and skill. Known also as Lady Death, Ludmila Pavlichenko remains the most successful female sniper in history and the fifth most successful overall. Born just outside of what is now Kiev, Ukraine in 1960, Pavlichenko was a self-described competitive tomboy who took up shooting long before World War II, earning a certificate for marksmanship as a teenager. At just 16, she married and gave birth to her first and only child. Her marriage soon crumbled, however, and she moved back in with her parents. During that time, she got a job as a grinder at the Kiev Arsenal factory. In 1937, Pavlichenko enrolled at Kiev University, where she studied history in the hopes of becoming a teacher. During her final year of studies, Germany attacked the Soviet Union and Pavlichenko didn't hesitate to drop everything and join the fight. In fact, she was one of the first people to volunteer at the Odessa recruiting office. While she specifically requested to serve in the infantry, the registrar pushed her to serve as a nurse. Pavlichenko said, absolutely not, and once the registrar saw she had experience as a markswoman, she was permitted to join the Red Army as a sniper, assigned to the 25th Rifle Division. As one of the first women in the Red Army, her male comrades didn't accept her immediately. 
That changed on the 8th of August 1941, however, when she smoked two enemy soldiers with a rifle handed to her by a fallen comrade. For the following two and a half months, Pavlichenko fought in the siege of Odessa and racked up a ridiculous 187 confirmed kills. After her 100th kill, she was promoted to the rank of senior sergeant. In October 1941, Pavlichenko and her unit were sent to Crimea, where they fought in the siege of Sevastopol. During this time, she was tasked with training fresh snipers who collectively killed 100 enemy soldiers. By May 1942, Pavlichenko was promoted to lieutenant, at which point she had 257 confirmed kills under her belt. In June 1942, she took mortar shrapnel to the face, an injury which ended her sharp shooting career. Her final kill count was 309. This figure includes 36 enemy snipers. Pavlichenko spent the rest of the war working as a propagandist for the Red Army and training new snipers. As part of her work as a propagandist, Pavlichenko was sent on a tour of Great Britain, Canada and the United States in 1942. Her task was to rally support from the Western Allies and encourage them to open a second front against the Germans. FDR welcomed Pavlichenko at the White House, making her the first Soviet citizen to be received by a US president. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt also took Pavlichenko on a tour of the US, during which time the press didn't take her all that seriously. She was referred to as the girl sniper, and the male reporters made comments about her uniform, saying that the skirt was too long and made her look fat. They also asked her stupid questions, like if she wore makeup on the front lines. Eventually, Pavlichenko became fed up and told the press, Gentlemen, I'm 25 years old and I have killed 309 fascist occupants by now. Don't you think you've been hiding behind my back for too long? But what do you think about these badass female snipers? Are there any other highly successful snipers that we missed? Why don't you think they're talked about more? Do they deserve a bigger spotlight? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.